Hello there. Welcome to the SPS podcast. This is the 40th episode. Yeah, 40th episode. Pretty cool. For this episode, I'm going to tell a personal story, a little bit of a different episode, but I'm going to tell you a little lesson that I learned about 10 years ago that helped shape my life. Let's get into it. Welcome to the SPS podcast, the Self Performance Strategies podcast. Unlocking the secrets to success and unlocking the secrets to self performance so you can improve mentally, emotionally, and physically. The SPS podcast is brought to you by the Pro Accelerator Program, helping business owners and business leaders save at least 10 working hours a week, improve their focus, and make more money. If that sounds like something you're interested in, check out the show notes and follow the links. But let's now jump in to this episode. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Episode 40 of the SPS podcast of the Self Performance Strategies podcast. In this episode, I want to discuss this idea of are you pulling the wrong levers in life? Or the flip that, are you pulling the right levers in life? Because I learned a lesson about 11 or 12 years ago, around about 2010, 11, when I was in my early Canadian life, when I moved from Ireland, UK, northeast of England, where I was based actually at that time, to Canada, and something happened to me. And because I pulled on the right levers, things worked out well. But I don't want to tell the full story. But before we jump into the story, and, and I don't want to give everything away, but before we jump into the full story, let's frame this conversation with a quote, like I do with all my episodes, and just because this is the 40th episode and I'm telling a bit of a personal story, it doesn't mean I can't still use a quote to frame it. But this is one of my favorite quotes. Actually, I would argue this is my favorite quote in my life, and it comes from W. Clement Stone. And he said, big doors swing on little hinges. I love, love, love this quote because it is so true. It's a fact of life. The tiny things that you do each day, the small positive actions that you invest in yourself, whether that's meditation, journaling, healthy eating, going for walks, thinking positively, taking actions toward your dreams, they all add up, but they are tiny little hinges, but they swing a massive door in your life. And you'll understand why this quote means so much to me once I get through this personal story. But what happened to me? What was my story? What am I talking about? Well, I heard these words in early 2011. So on the phone, And I heard the words, your store is closing. Honestly, those words rocked my world in, I think it was March 2011. My visa was up for renewal in Canada. Uh, I was waiting for it to come to an end and I had applied for a new one, uh, a more permanent residency visa. And I didn't have time to go and get a new job. And I would end up being deported from Canada if my store closed and I lost my job. Now, 12 years later, I look back at this moment and I smile at it as one of the most defining and stressful moments of my life. But there were so many lessons, so many lessons that I pulled from it. But what happened? Well, let's start with the shock. (laughs) The shock. I was planning a trip back to the UK and Ireland and I'd requested some time off. And I was expecting a phone call from my regional manager. And I saw the phone ring and I thought, oh, this is him. I'm going to get the green light for an extended vacation. I took the call and I was super excited and I just started talking to him. And I was just like, yeah, we're going to Ireland. I'm really excited about it. You know, to frame it, I was actually taking my girlfriend at the time, who's now my ex-girlfriend, you know, it's over 10, 11 years ago, (laughs) that uh, I was like excited about saying how I was going to take her back to Ireland to to see where I came from because she was from Canada or Vancouver, obviously. And he had to stop me and slow me down and be like, Steve, 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 I've actually got something else I want to talk to you about. And he said, your store is closing and I'm not sure I have a job for you. 
whew, the panic set in pretty quickly on that call. Like this, the worst case scenario popped in my head. Oh, you know, fuck. Basically, you know, I'm I'm out, I'm out of a job. Losing a job is scary enough, but having to leave a country hit hard. It hit real hard. It hit real, real hard. I, I remember the, the the first couple of days after that when I had no idea what was happening. I was basically told my store is closing and I'm losing my job. The store is going to be closed by this date. I won't have a job past that. I, I, I won't have a job to complete the visa application. I remember my girlfriend at the time was in tears because there was this possibility of me having to you know, leave in a couple of months. I think it was April or, 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 or May my visa was running out and I hadn't got the, the new um, permanent residency go ahead through yet. And even, even if I got a new job of a different company, the way that the visa application worked is you get kicked out and you have to start all over again. So my application would have to go through the whole bureaucratic process again, which is about six or seven months. And I only had like two months left of a visa. So at worst case scenario, I might've been able to stay in Canada, but I wouldn't be able to work legally. And yeah, it was just, it was all hands to the pump, all hands to the deck. It was just like, what, what, what am I doing? Everything felt out of control. Everything just, it, it felt like everything that I'd worked towards moving to Canada, trying to get out, out of a closed holiday visa that I was on as a student in my late twenties, early thirties, you know, I was already doing something that was a bit extraordinary. And then to have it pulled away from you right at the end, it was, it was so stressful. And the reality of it was, you know, if we pull into the reality, I was the newest manager in the region. So I I, I, I was 100% sure I was done. I'm done. I am done here. You know, this is, I'm just going to go through the motions and I'll, I'll end up just moving back to Ireland. And, you know, it was a good, good, good idea, good try, you know. And there were several managers in, in the region that had a lot more experience than me. Uh, but I had one saving grace. I did have one saving grace because I was working for a record store at the time and I'll not name it because I, I don't really want to, you know, say anything uh, positive or negative, but there was a store card and I was top of the region and my store was top of the region for selling this store card. It was a brand new store card and it was my regional manager's main focus. And obviously I was the newest manager in the region. I wanted to impress. I wanted to move up. I wanted to get, uh, you know, a bigger store. I wanted to get more money, blah, 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 blah. So I really focused in hard on this p store card. You know, it was it was a hinge that was swinging a big door. So anyway, the rumors circled. I, I heard things on the, on the grapevine. And, you know, a week or so passed. You know, days turned into a week. And I heard other managers had left. I'm air quoting here. Other managers had left. I, or walked. So they were either let go or they walked because they saw the writing was on the wall. And every time the phone rang at the store, I'm telling you, I got a little nervous. I got a little nervous. Is this the call? Is the regional manager going to call me? Is this the call? It's going to change my life. I was living on a knife's edge. I was so stressed out. And I can honestly say it was probably the most stress I've ever been over, over like a, a week or so period. You know, obviously I've had breakups with, with, with ladies and it's been a stressful situation and, and those never go well. And then obviously I've had other things happen in my life where I've been stressed out. But this was just such a unique experience in my life. This sort of idea that I'd have to move back 7,000 miles back to the United Kingdom, back to Ireland. And that this golden opportunity of creating a new life in, in Vancouver in British Columbia in, in the Pacific Northwest of, of the Americas would be taken away from me. And yeah, I, I didn't want that to happen. So that's why it was very stressful for me because I, I, I love Vancouver. I'm still here and I absolutely think it's a fantastic city. Expensive, <laughs> but it's a fantastic city and I love it. So anyway, the second phone call came, the day arrived, the day arrived and that phone rang and oh fuck here we go I was like I'm done I'm done I just knew it I knew it and the regional manager said hi asked me how the store was going you know did the whole like yeah I'm, I'm gonna drag this out you know how's the store going what's going on blah 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 what are the numbers and I'm like well, we just hurry the fuck up and just you know can we get to the the, the the point here and he went Steve I paused and he went how would you like to work in this store 
<laughs> I can't tell you how quickly I said yes. Like, even before he finished, it was like, yes, 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 yes. It was like scoring a winning goal in the last minute of injury time in the World Cup. You know, I, the best ever player ever. Boom, bang, Messi, goal. You know, I won. I was over the moon. I was absolutely over the moon. I would get to stay in Canada. I would get to fulfill my visa application and, you know, I'd be able to move on. I'd be able to finish that visa process and I'd be able to stay in Canada. And that was fantastic. And I did. And I did. And funny enough, I left that job pretty much as soon as my visa came through. So, I mean, yes, they saved me and they allowed me, but I wasn't getting paid very well in that job, to be fair. So, actually, it was actually a couple of months. I think it was uh, about a year later, actually, I, I left that job. It wasn't like immediate, but it was pretty quickly after uh, getting that visa that... Uh, well, it was very quick after I got the visa that I actually left that job. It was about eight or nine months after this scenario happened. But what saved me? What was the hinge that swung the big door that saved me? And I've already brought it up once, but it was the store cards. 100% the store cards saved me. I wanted to impress and succeed in my new job. The regional manager was obsessed with these cards, like I mentioned. And a lot of the older managers didn't buy in. A lot of the staff didn't buy in. There was just a general sort of like, meh, about these cards. Oh, this is just a gimmick. This is just something that's going to pass. But this this whole process was so key, so key for uh, the regional manager. He was so focused on them that it was extremely important, you know, that we got these cards in. And I made it my goal to dominate the store card leaderboard. Not only me, but my staff. And we, and we did. We did dominate I think I was in the top five people, sellers of all uh, uh, for the whole region. Uh, and I know a couple of my staff were also in the top 10. So I think at one point I was the top selling manager, I think, but I think some other manager beat me off because uh, he was working in a bigger store and had a, had a more opportunity. I think it was actually one of the managers from the main Vancouver store uh, that actually beat me because I was working in a, in a smaller, more uh, a mall store in the, in, the, in the suburbs of Vancouver. So he had a better opportunity than me, damn him. But anyway... I really focused in on that small hinge. That small hinge of uh, focusing on those pure cards, that was the big door. That, that was, sorry, that was the small hinge that swung the big door for me. It, it, was, it was the thing that that regional manager could look at me and be like, he's a team player, he gets it, he's doing this small thing that's a small part of the job, but it's the most important part of the job, and it saved me. It did. I honestly believe, looking back now, 12 years ago, that that saved me. It saved my Canadian journey. And that's the lesson. Big doors swing in small hinges. Find the levers that create the most impact. I have taken that lesson to the extreme for the last decade. Whether it's working in sales, whether it's working in the corporate environment, and now for the last nearly two years, uh, when this podcast is being recorded in my entrepreneurial solopreneur business and every role since in every position that i'm in i'm thinking what makes me money what matters to my boss what matters to me now i have my business kind of thing what busy what is busy work and distraction what matters most to my business to the business to anything what 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 actually is the high dollar and high value work you have to do and, and following this rule in my life i've gone from a retail manager at that point, he was making about 30 odd K a year, which is awful amounts of money in Vancouver, to succeeding in multiple six-figure roles, and then now having a six-figure coaching business. All because, and I put it down to this, because I, I do think like this now. That incident of nearly being kicked out of Canada because of a store closing and not having control over what was happening Yes, you could say I should have investments and stocks and a side hustle and I shouldn't let outside external factors affect me that much or, or be in a position where someone could do that to me. But with I, I wasn't at that point in my life. So I focus on what I could control within my life and what I could control was showing up and focusing on the small hinges that were swinging the big doors in the job that I was working in. I, I had my ears open and I was listening to what the superior or more important people in the organization were saying. And I did that. And I can tell you from working in corporate for many years and in sales, it's amazing how many people miss this. It's amazing how many people, even in the solopreneurship, they're off doing 
silly things like on Twitter, people chasing likes and followers. I'm, I've got a large Twitter account, as some of you may know. People are out chasing followers and, and likes and trying to go viral. I'm more concerned about calendarly links and how many people are converting from my landing page because that's actually business. Getting followers and likes isn't business. So the big door that swings my hinge with my Twitter account and my LinkedIn account, it's not how many followers I have or how many likes I get on a post. It's how many people are actually following the paper trail of my links and booking a call with me and then eventually signing up to my business. That's the that's the small hinge with the big door <laughs> if you catch my drift. So in your in your world, what are you doing? Where are your levers? Yeah? What levers are you focusing on? You know, are you finding the high value and high dollar levels in your business? And are you ensuring that you're doing those on a daily basis? Are, are you regularly monitoring and adjusting these levers and using data to drive your decisions to stay ahead of bumps or barriers? Because you, you need to do that. You need to review your data to find out what the small hinges are that swing big doors. Are you identifying and prioritizing the most impactful areas of your business that, that drive significant return on investment, significant ROI? Do you know the right levers? Can you call them out? If I was to arrive where you are right now and put a gun to your head and be like, what are the key levers in your life or in your business that create the most results? Can you say them? Because I'm telling you right now, as a solopreneur business coach or a performance coach for people, you should know these things. I know them in my business. I just explained some of them to you. You should know them in yours. You know, by focusing on these high lever, lover, levers, <laughs> I can speak by focusing on these high level levers. <laughs> you know, you're going to reduce wasted time. You're not going to be doing dumb shit. You're not going to be doing low value or negative value work. You're, you're going to increase your, your sales, your lead generation, whatever it is you do in your business. If you know your high, high value levers or your, or your big money levers, you're going to save time each week, you know? And, and are you devoting the right resources to these levers in your life? Are they a priority? Is your business set up for you for long-term success and stability because you know your levers? Those are, you know, I think five questions, maybe four questions I've just asked there. So with this lesson from my own experience from 12 years ago, from nearly getting kicked out of from, off Canada, from nearly being deported because I had a job taken away from me, but I was able to save my own job because I focused on the key levers. The regional manager wanted to keep me within the business because he needed people who were effective while the or company was closing down. He still needed good people in the important seats in the bus. That's where I took that lesson from. You know? I made sure that I was doing the important levers and I've continued to make sure I'm doing that within the sales job I had following that, within the corporate job I had following that, and now within my entrepreneurial, solopreneurial business. So are you focused on the right levers in your life? Thank you very much for joining me for the 40th episode of the SPS podcast. I really do appreciate you. Thank you for listening uh, this far to this episode. You can check me out over on Twitter at, at Steve Timoney. That's at S-T-E-V-E-T-I-M-O-N-E-Y. Send me a DM and let me know what you think of the podcast. You can also head on over to my website, which is stephentimoney.com. That's S-T-E-P-H-E-N-T-I-M-O-N-E-Y.com. And you can check out all the other podcast episodes. You can check out my Pro Accelerator coaching program. And you can check out all my blog posts and everything about me. It's on my website, stephentimoney.com. Thank you very much, and we will speak to you in the next one. Make it a good one.